I will read the agenda, then we'll come back and go through it uh, one at a time. Call to order. We're going to identify board members in attendance. We're going to do some uh, congratulations and um, and send-offs of, of new and old people. We're going to have some elections for the uh, planning board. Review mail, review minutes, take public comment. And then we have three old businesses. One is floodplain bylaw amendment. The other is the Sugarloaf condo project. And the other is the North Main Street Recreational Plan. Then we've got some new business, which is a stormwater permit application. Then we'll see if there's any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the post in the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Uh, so let us go around and um, introduce identify the board members first of all to make sure we have a quorum and any um any votes that we do and when we need to know who's saying what we need to state our name and on every vote we have to i'll actually do a roll call and then the person will say yes or no if it's a vote um so i have to kind of uh identify people that way um but let's go around from who's on my my screen here i got paul you're here So if you're if you're muted most of the time, and then you have to remember to unmute yourself when it's time to talk. So, Paul. Paul, can you let us know you're here? Okay, maybe we'll come back to him. Rachel. Present, Rachel. Blair. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, present. Max. Max Antis, present. Paul, are you present yet? Count him that we can see him. All right, John Waite, I'm here. And then we have two Two brand new uh, planning board members who would like to have them actually maybe say a, a couple words about themselves as they as they say that they're here. But congratulations, first of all, on the election was just a week ago. Um, Denise Mason and, and Anna Lee, um, and I'll let you actually help us. <laughs> I don't want to get your name wrong the first time. So, um, Anna Lee, why don't you just identify yourself and um, say, say a word or two if you'd like. Yeah, Anna Lee Wolf Cool. Uh, you can kind of remember that I grew up in California where they thought cool wolf. So that works. I am uh, here. Ah. Oh, good. We got Paul. There's Paul. So glad, glad to be here and um, you know, really looking forward to. Uh, Paul, Allison, I'm learning more, especially as I'm uh, getting up to steam with uh, open meeting laws and conflict of interest and all of that. So I know I have a learning curve, but uh, got some good, good people to work along with. So thank you. Great. Welcome. Thank you're, you. hard, you're hardly a newcomer, Annalie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I don't have my knitting today. I don't have as many <laughs> meetings as I have. Right. I usually have my knitting. Okay, today I put it aside. <laughs> Denise. Hi, Denise Mason, present. Um, hearing a, bit, a lot of background noise. Um, we've been here for close to 30 years. We have two kids here. Um, love living love living in Deerfield. I'm really excited to be on the board, give back to the town. I'll have a lot more time. I'm retiring from my job in January. Maybe do something else, but so I'm excited to have some time to work on the planning board. I think it'll be a great opportunity. Excellent. So I guess we will hold off on a lot of assignments until January and then give you more work. Mm, okay. <laughs> Um, and then I'd just like to say uh, a, a couple words of thanks to the outgoing planning board members. Um, and I didn't do as much homework as I as I should have, but um, Roger Sadowski was on the planning board. I 
when I got on, and that's been at least 12 some odd years. Um, so he's been doing a, a, a fine job with us for many years, and we appreciate all his work. He's brought a lot of experience to this board, um, taught me things early on. And so we want to say thank you to him. And then Kip Kamosa has been on for, for several years as well. Um, even when he was on the select board and then off the select board, he stayed on through the, through the planning board, which was uh, very helpful. And he, uh, I can say, did a thorough job on a lot of projects that we were involved with and always I did his homework. I always appreciated that about, about Kip. So I want to make sure the, the minutes reflect our appreciation and uh, their, their great work for the town over the years. Rachel, anything to add? We didn't practice this, but. I, I, I also uh, express my, my gratitude to Roger and Kip for the um, significant effort and commitment they've made to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right. So as we do the first meeting after elections, when we know who's going to be on the planning board for the next year, we elect three positions. Um, and that is the chair, vice chair, and clerk. Um, for the past year, I've been the chair, Rachel has been the vice chair, and, and Paul has been the clerk. It's actually been that way, I think, for a few years. And we always like change. So we're looking for nominations from the floor or if any will have anything to, to say here before we do uh, elections. Well, I would like to nominate you, um, John. I think that you've done a spectacular job. I know that it is a lot of work and it requires a lot of time between meetings. Um, we've talked about this before. This is a um, a volunteer position, but it is not without a lot of homework. And um, you've carried the ball on that, uh, as has Paul. Um, and um, I really appreciate it, for one. Um, and I feel like your, your experience in that role has been, um, is a real asset. And I apologize <laughs> for nominating. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep, there you go, Paul. Go ahead. Okay. I wasn't able to get through it. For some reason it was it was blocked out. Um, and what was the question? Do you have any nominations for chair, vice chair, or clerk? Or anything to say about it? I'm I'm in for whatever that it doesn't it's no it's not a big deal to me. Um. Well, I would say um I'm I'm happy to continue as vice chair. Um, the times that John has uh, really literally had to be absent uh, are some of the most stressful days of you know the year uh, for me and. Um, and I always gives me a lot of respect for what he does as chair. Um, and I'm, I think it's a great learning curve for anybody who is wants to sit close to that position and kind of figure out what that looks like. Um, so I'm absolutely happy to uh, cede my role as vice chair, um, but also just as happy to stay there. Um, and if I could be helpful to Paul, too. Paul's really long time carried the ball for um, the minutes. And um, if he wants a break there, I'm, I'm happy to step in. But um, whatever. It is a lot of work in between. It's a lot of homework for those, those two positions, particularly. Now, uh, what, what was, I, I missed a lot of this. Now, what's the... What are we looking at now? For We're talking about running? the officers, the, the positions, uh, clerk, vice chair, and chair. Vice chair, we didn't even have okay, vice chair before. That's a new-ish new role. 
When I first joined the board, we didn't have a vice chair. So, and Mary, I'd like to see if you're interested. You've been on the board now for, for a year um, and whether you'd like to be nominated for a uh, position. I, um, I am, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm also committed on a different level. So I want to make sure that I'm able to do what I'm putting out there. Um, I would do um, either Paul's or Rachel's, but I was just about to nominate Rachel because she does such a nice job. But, <laughs> but yes, I'm absolutely open for a position and able to take on more responsibility. So Paul, we didn't have this discussion at all, but this is as good a time as any to have it. Is, is, would, are you, you've been the clerk for a while. Would you be, be happy with someone else taking it on for a while? We have more staff at the town hall now who helps with the minutes, but I um, know that's a pain sometimes. Yeah, fine with the with the uh, uh, with the um, clerk, but uh, I'm not that interested in the other two positions. So, however it goes is fine with me. With this web we platform, I sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just saying with this web platform, I can upload this whole conversation the next day. So um, minutes are good because it sort of surmises the whole conversation, but it's still I'm able to put it up there and it takes care of that um, requirement. So, well, I was going to ask if, I, if we could nominate Ann Mary as clerk. I, I know, um, I got to oh, tell you, fine. I copy you on a lot of emails, and I, I yeah. seldom get responses yeah. from you in between meetings. So I'm, I think maybe you're, you're overloaded and you don't get to it. So maybe Ann Mary could be able to participate more. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine either way. This doesn't matter to me. All right. So I'll, I'd like to nominate Ann, Ann Mary as a clerk. Have a second? Denise and Annalie, you can vote on these now. I'll second. Any discussion? Max, do you have anything to add? No, that's, that's fine. All right, so let's, uh, we can just do the slate then. I do like to say that if I, um, I will, I would accept the nomination for chair again, as long as I know I do have a good vice chair and clerk, so I can, I'd like to facilitate the meetings. I'm happy doing that, but um, I think we'd like would like to share the work in between the meetings as much as possible. So, um, and as I've also also said, if you vote for me to be chair, then you've kind of got to respect me if I try to keep the meetings uh, on target and you know <laughs> uh, keep them moving. And I, I think we've been doing a pretty good job the past couple of years. So, so I'm I'm good with that. All right, so let's. Um, so the slate is um, is John Waite as as chair, Rachel as vice chair, and Anne Mary as clerk. Do we have a? Well, I guess I shouldn't move that. So, can someone make a motion? Sure, I make the motion to have John as um, John as the oh god, John as the chair, Rachel as vice chair, and Anne Mary as clerk. Great. Second. Emily, I'll second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Um, now I go around. Um, so all those in favor, I'll name your name. And if you just say uh, uh, yes or no. Um, Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Paul. Okay. You did. I'm, I'm not sure I'm hearing what's happening. I'm, have, we, have we got a slate of officers to go here? Yes. Me as chair, Rachel as vice chair, and Ann Mary as clerk. You approve? I'm okay with that. All right. Max? 
Yes. Max Antis, yes. Annalie. Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Denise. Denise Mason, yes. And John Waite, yes. That's a unanimous seven to nothing. Well, congratulations, I guess. <laughs> All right, next up is to review the mail. Um, I did that earlier. There was one thing about Waitley that we don't really need to talk about. Um, review the minutes. So we do have minutes um, that were in our, our email. Did everybody read them? Does anybody want to make a motion? That's minutes from the May 4th yeah, meeting. I'm, I move that we accept the mi minutes um, as, let me see. I have no, I have no objections. I second, <clears throat> I second that. And Mary Cletier. Oh, yeah, that was Rachel Blaine who moved that. Good. All right, and uh, it look good to me. Any other comments? So the motion was made and seconded, so I'm going to come around again and get people to um, to vote to approve the minutes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, uh, vote yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Oh. I'm... I'm in favor, yes. Max. Max Antis, yes. And uh, John, yes. And then I think we can, well, Annalie and Denise probably abstain, but Annalie? Well, they have to abstain because they weren't at the meeting. And Annalie yeah. will abstain. Denise. Denise Mason abstain. So they passed 502. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, then we take any brief uh, questions or comments from the public on things that are not on the agenda. Does anybody have anything? I didn't, I didn't see anybody on the list. I think everybody that's on the call has something on the agenda. So let's, let's move along. So the first old business is the discussion of the floodplain bylaw amendment. So Chris Curtis cannot be with us tonight. Um, I don't know, he didn't tell me to keep it a secret why he can't, but um, anyway, it seemed like he had some kind of injury. Um, but what we had said at the last meeting, as we just reviewed in the minutes, is that there was some concerns about what it is that anybody had issues on in the floodplain bylaw. And so we asked people to read them carefully and to submit comments. I have not seen any comments from any planning board members over the past month. Um, so it could be that we're all okay with the, uh, the floodplain bylaw that we reviewed last month. But either way, it's been too long since we had our last um, public hearing that we need to have another one before we can actually recommend this to the um, to the annual meeting, because any bylaw, any bylaw changes have to go to annual to annual town meeting, and we knew it wasn't going to be appropriate for this last annual town meeting because it was outdoors and it would have been difficult. So we're kind of planning to hopefully have a fall um, town meeting when we might be able to submit some bylaw changes. So what I propose is that at our next meeting we have a public hearing on the floodplain bylaws, and at that point everybody's submitted any any um, questions they have with it because we've had several meetings and it seems like most of us you know are okay with it um, so is that all right if we just put this for our next uh, uh, make it a public hearing at our next planning board meeting yes i mean i think that the 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 chief concern was over the maps and chris once he brings those maps people will have a stronger sense of what properties are impacted um, that there's going to be a change in maps um, is that's in the dis that's in the future, and that we'll have those that information that we will be armed with. Our anyway, yes, I agree. 
the digital maps are also so much easier to see, I think. I think it makes it much easier. I think it makes it much easier to be online for this part of it. Yeah. All right. So let's um Yeah, I think we should go around and vote that this that we uh, schedule so a public do we, hearing. Do we just make a motion to open a public hearing? Yep. So I, I move that we um this is Rachel Blaine. Schedule. I move that we open a public hearing at our next meeting, which will be July. That's important, isn't it? Um Sorry. Well, maybe we need to do that first, actually. But um, July 6th is the first Monday of the month in July. Yeah. That's not the, so July 6th. Um, yeah. That's, it's not a holiday, right? It, yeah, when, it's when, then, when? Then it, I don't think so. I think that it, because the. No, it's not. We're, it's uh, the, third. the third is. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. So I move, All I move right. that we open a public hearing at our next meeting on July 6th. Uh, an open, uh, uh, the public hearing, sorry, um, to review the uh, bylaws that we have um, in front of us. I second that. All right. Um, could you just say your name before you second that, Anna Lee? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Anne Mary Cloutier. I second that. Any any other discussion? All right. All those in favor of scheduling the public hearing for the proposed floodplain bylaw, July 6, 7 o'clock, please say aye. Uh, Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. Paul. Paul, Alice, I, I, I concur. Max. Max Santis, aye. Annalie. <laughs> Annalie Wolf Cole, aye. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. And John Waite, aye. Unanimous. Um, Jennifer, is that something you can help us publicize? I think we have the same language that we used probably um, might have been three or four months ago. We had a public hearing, so we can use a lot of the same language. Yeah, absolutely. I can set that up. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, moving on. So update on the Sugarloaf Condo project and the final sign off. So we've had, um, this was a project that many of us know a couple of years ago. Um, and as part of the conditions for um, this project was that it would come back to the planning board, I think three times for three different sign offs uh, to, I believe it's to extend the road. And so we would, we always checked in with the building inspector prior to that um, because the building inspector is the one monitoring the progress on the project. And today I received two letters. I think, um, I don't know if everybody did, but I received a letter from the, uh, building inspector and the DPW, uh, the head of the DPW in Deerfield, and both of them, uh, and I can get I can get the letters up, but both of them said that they um, say that everything has been completed as um, as necessary in order to approve this final s sign off for the road. But I thought that since this has been a while and there's been a lot of progress on there, I thought it would be really helpful for us to hear from the, the developer and um, about how's it going. Um, where our, I, part of what I'd like to also hear is where our, was our decision and our conditions appropriate and have there been you know, challenges and some successes. So we asked um, Mark Whiteman and uh, Dan Grave, his attorney, to, uh, to, to come and give us a little update and I can tell you Mark I was at the, the reason why I was running back here at seven o'clock I just climbed Mount Sugarloaf and I looked down on it and took a picture to see how it was if it was being completed so I can I have the aerial view so, so Mark can you give us a little update thanks for being sure here. this is Mark Whiteman uh, we're probably two years uh, ahead of schedule or we will c complete this about two years ahead of schedule uh, should be done about a year and a half from now. So that's a good thing for the town and a good thing for the people living in the neighborhood. 
uh, we have had tremendous success and tremendous amount of interest. I would say I haven't done a, a percentage on it, but I would say somewhere around 40% of the people who are living there uh, or signed up to live there are from Deerfield proper. And then most of the other people are from the towns surrounding. Uh, we have had very little in the way of problems. Obviously, this problems you would expect getting a $24 million project up and running. But since then, it's been going on very, very smoothly. The only thing that is problematic and difficult to deal with is the storm water. And uh, I know that's partially you folks and also the state, but it is a very cumbersome process. Uh, it's also very new to all of us because we are used to using storm drains. I think the intent is uh, admirable to keep the water in our aquifers instead of having it going down the Connecticut River to the Long Island Sound. I think that uh, that's, that's the positive of it. To actually install it uh, has been brutal. But we're, we're getting through it. We have 32, uh, 32 units now occupied by their owners. We also have 14 at a time that we're constructing now. We will construct 24 a year. Uh, that is a speed up of the project. And to make sure the quality has stayed, we've actually hired about 60 total workers now. Because of COVID and the uh, governor's belief that we were essential workers, we have not slowed down at all. We saw a slowdown in the market for purchases in uh, early spring before COVID. I was able to sell or put on a deposit five in five days. Uh, a year ago, this last spring, we put uh, 18 in 36 days under, de under deposit. So it looked like we were going to have another spring like that. Uh, we are almost out of stock now because I put 300 deposit in the last 10 days. It seems something's happened. I don't know what it is, uh, but the public is out there looking again. And this age group, which is the age group we have to worry about the most because of COVID, uh, they're coming in droves to see the project again. So it's been fantastic. I have, as of today, just five units out of 70 that are available for purchase. And um, you have my number. <laughs> Did I hear you right? You have five unsold units out of the 70 right now? That's correct. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. So as I said, I have the I have the two letters. Um, Robert Walden, our, bu our building commissioner, said I am satisfied with the substantial completion of phase two and three roadways, drainage and soar for Snowberry Circle and Greylock Lane. Um, and then the um, Kevin Scowborough, the director of DPW, said I'm satisfied with the su substantial completion of phase two and three roadways, drainage, soar. Um, this approval encompasses all roads, drainage, and sewer for the entire project. So, um, Snowberry's the circle mark, right? And the gray lock's the one that cuts across it. So, um, yes, that's correct. John, hi, John. Hi, Plain Board. It's Dan Graves. Um, so, when we started the project, uh, the options were two. We could have tried to post a bond for the construction of the road. Obviously, the, the town is concerned that when a developer starts a road, it needs to be finished. Um, so the options were two to either post a bond or to establish a covenant that said that we would not uh, sell units on the portions of the road until the planning board had signed off and that covenant was recorded and essentially that covenant stated that with the letter that you've referenced from the uh, head of the DPW that the uh, roads were substantially completed that uh, the planning board chair would sign off so that's kind of the technical issue before the board tonight. So thank you for reminding me that because I was reading through the conditions that we wrote and it didn't have this in there. The condition was the bond. And so then I asked a, um, a town officer, a, a town person to help with that um, covenant. And um, I didn't I didn't get it, but that's um, what, what I remember is that we kind of switched that out a little bit there. So, um, so the past two, I think this is the third sign off and the past two, um, I did based on the building commissioner's recommendations, and then I informed the board about it. Um, but this one, I would I would actually like the board to to vote on it, sort of with me, and give me permission to to sign off. Um, and also that the, the public knows that we've uh, 
we're, we're looking at it. And yeah, so so um, the building commissioner and DPW say that the sores are all okay and the drainage and stuff. And I know that's the challenge, but um, as long as it meets the town uh, the town needs, then then I think we're satisfied. Any questions from planning board members? So this is the third one, John. I feel like it's not this. There's this is the last. They, it is right. They completed one, two, and now three. Three, okay. And the one, two, and three were really just those were the developers. Dan Graves, those were the developers' kind of decisions on how to construct the road. We could have gone through the whole thing at once, but the way infrastructure lined up and things, we just decided to break it down in these phases. Um, there's no no magic with the three, but that's how we ended up doing it, coming before John on uh, the first two. I've also been going through I... all of the decisions. This is Jen Gannett, sorry. I've been going through some of the um, decisions and you know, making sure and talking to the building commissioner that um, we'll go back and circle back like about the as built for the property and just there's just little final details that will, you know, have to be completed. And so um, we've been looking at that. Um, well, I did anyways. I looked through it and I talked to the building commissioner about it and just making sure that all of those little details that are on the decisions that the planning board made um, are going to be met along the way. So eyes are on it. And as, as thank, it's Dan Graves you, Jen. and Jen, as the, Jen, as those come up, feel free to reach out to me. And if there's any we can, you know, tick off or supply anything with, we're happy to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it was a it was a uh, six page decision back on um, April twenty fourth, two thousand seventeen. And I, I think you're right. We this is quicker than what had been anticipated to be. Uh, signing off on all the three phases. Thought it might take a little longer. The market has been tremendous. And it's the only way to put it. And uh, we had to bring in more people to make sure we could stay up with it. And as I said, keep the quality up. But uh, I give a lot of credit to my general contractors, uh, all three of them that have done a fantastic job. We're, we're building something we're very proud of. The quality is there uh, from what I'm being told by the buyers and from my eye. And I'm just very happy with the product we're able to support to the town we're looking at somewhere around four hundred thousand dollars a year in tax money coming in without children in the schools being added so i think it's a great benefit for deerfield in a couple of different ways i don't know I, I i i'm thinking of all the traffic that we talked about forever and ever and it's it's curious <laughs> because i i haven't felt the impact of that traffic but i'm glad it's under control so this is good Thank you. <laughs> and I, I think, John, uh, I don't believe, uh, I think Dan can fill you in on this, but I don't believe this is a votable item. This is just uh, as long as we met the criteria of the DPW and the building inspector, it's a sign off by you. So I think that's yep. the chicken. Yes. Yeah. So maybe just have the minutes reflected that we did have this report out and everything that way. Um, Sometimes as chair, I get nervous sometimes signing things without uh, having everybody everybody behind me. Um, I, I feel like I signed that. one of those. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I, maybe I didn't sign one. one. <laughs> so I think, uh, is, is Tony on the call? I, so we don't have any hard questions for the, en for the engineer, but I don't know if he has anything to say or... Uh, I think he's waiting to come on later in the night. Uh, he's used to us moving slowly. We've changed a lot, Mark, <laughs> in the past three years. You, t you tell him that, would you? <laughs> I will. <laughs> well, we appreciated you guys. I mean, it, it, we went back and forth a lot, I know. And um, Anna Lee was the neighbor at the time. And, I, um, you know, so it, it, we are we're, we are where we are. And... Uh, I think we're ready to, to sign off on it and uh, and keep moving forward. Thank you, so, John. I appreciate it. I appreciate the planning board's help. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I can say that I think the building inspector and the DPW, I mean, they've appreciated working with you too, and they, they haven't uh, certainly told us any complaints, so that's a good thing. <laughs> appreciate that. Yep. 
All right. Thanks very much, Mark and Dan. So, John, thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you all of you. Thank John, you. just yep. procedurally, John, it's Dan Graves. Just procedurally, we have um, yeah. two units that are tied to this road phase coming up for closing um, somewhere between the 19th and the 24th. So I just didn't know how to coordinate getting your signature. I'm happy to notarize here. Or I don't know what your schedule is like or what the availability is of a notary, but. I'm actually available. I'm in Greenfield tomorrow. So um, are you, uh, should we, should we meet over yeah. at your office? That sounds great. I'll have it at the front desk and I'll be, you know, we're masked up here and the door's open. So we're happy to see you whenever you come in. All right. I'll give you a call before I come over then. Good. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks again, Thanks. folks. Thank you, everybody. All right. I got to go back to the, I only have one screen and I got all my documents on it here. So get back to the uh, agenda. Where the heck did it go? It was here. There it is. All right. All right. So I asked to put this uh, next item on here because we had it on as a uh, well, business now because we had it on new business last month. And um, we talked about the North Main Street Recreational Plan. That's a CIPC project. And last month, the planning board um, looked at it. Uh, Chief Pachur came on and explained it, and we looked at some documents, I think, and um, we we felt it was uh, it, it looked good. We made it made sense. I'm not sure now if we approved it or endorsed it or what, but it, it looked good. And then um, some of you were at the annual meeting um, two weeks ago, and there was a change of some some uh, to me anyway. I guess I'll say from from my point of view, some new information came up, and I as a um, well, I, I guess I must say I spoke as the planning board chair at that time because I introduced myself that way. And I said that because there was new information that came up and it, this had to do with that the property owners weren't necessarily willing sellers. And one of the warrant articles said that either the town purchases the land or takes by eminent domain. And I don't remember us having talked about that as a planning board. So I made a decision at the time to say that I'm not sure if the planning board would have endorsed that project if we had discussed the eminent domain part of it. Um, as it turns out, at the town meeting, the town meeting, um, well, they changed the foreign article and then, and then they did not approve it anyway. But, you know, a lot of time and energy and, um, and it was a good project that the town, you know, doesn't, we don't just want to forget about. So I don't know exactly what the planning board's role in it is, but I did want to bring this back to the planning board to let you know what I did at town meeting and you can tell me if I was right or wrong, but I also asked uh, uh, Chief Paturk to come back and, and tell us like what is it, what's going on, is there any update? So John, I wonder if you can just give us any update uh, first. Thanks for coming. Sure, there's no major updates at this point. Uh, the, uh, the parcel is moving forward, the other 8.5 that we are purchasing from Joyce Prevere. I believe that's scheduled to be signed off on by the town July 1st. And we will look at signing an engineering firm on board. Um, annual town meeting was quite eventful. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to speak and really describe the extent of the project and the reason that the board had written the article the way in which it was to purchase, to take, or otherwise acquire the property. Because we didn't know if one sister was going to say yes, one sister was going to say no. We did know that Charles Mark had agreed that he would sell us up to two acres. He wanted a band shell in his name and he had owned it for 33 and a half years. He bought it, he paid for it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we just, we have to move forward and see how things work out. And the select board being that town meetings are every six to 12 months, we're looking for authorization to go to the sisters and say, hey, we don't want to rush you, but would you please keep us in the back of your mind because it truly facilitates a great uh, environment for the town and our children as a whole. So, like I said, unfortunately, I couldn't convey that on town meeting floor. I was pretty much shut off. All right. So I guess the um, so will will like negotiations sort of keep taking place? I know the vote was that we you, the town couldn't 
purchase it necessarily, but it doesn't say you couldn't keep the conversations going, right? Yeah, I'm not sure where the conversations are going at this point. I know I, I haven't broached the topic with the town administrator to see if we would reach out. My preference would be to back away for at least 30 to 60 days minimal while uh, the daughters had time to grieve uh, the loss of their father. You know, Charles was an amazing uh, person. And I, I truly believe when I met with him and I had two witnesses there with me that he really wanted his legacy to live on in the town of Deerfield. And he truly enjoyed culture. Uh, I think he'd be honored to have a band shell named after him. I know a couple of the neighbors were certainly not happy that there possibly was a band shell behind them. Um, but I think truly the town as a whole would enjoy it. And so much so that if we can squeeze a band shell on the existing Joyce Prevere property, that I still would ask the select board and other groups to entertain naming it after Charles Mark because I think it's the right thing to do. John, can I ask you a couple of questions since we're all talking about it? Um, I was looking at the plans and I'm psyched about conserving open spaces and I have a lot of faith that you guys are going to work this out in a way that's amenable to everybody. Um, uh, but I'm wondering if the plans that we saw are iterative, if there's going to be um, something more in terms of ADA um, uh, um, accessibility. Those uh, were absolutely preliminary plans just so people could have a visual idea. Right. We, we were actually looking at sound barrier fences. We were looking at the possibility of putting the band shell further back. And then we started to have the discussion back and forth about the vast majority that may use the band shell could be handicapped. They may be our older age group, where if you look at a soccer field, you're generally going to be dealing with younger families they can walk to the back side of the parcel. So we were going back and forth with many different ideas, but we wanted something that town meeting could actually visualize. So we were literally at the 10 to 20% stage and we were going to go forth from there. Okay. Thank you. No, that was great. I think one of the things that occurred to me um, at the time, I heard this, proposition on three different committees so i feel very comfortable with the, the yeah. as it is as it was laid out by um but one of the things that keeps coming up for me is the um the upcoming um town celebration that we are you know and i think uh, the chief and i both we we were through the you know the last celebration and a lot of it happened in the park where there's now a school. A lot of the town events that brought people together um, happened in a park and we don't have that now. We don't have a place. In, in, so that kind of, that was poignant to me as we sat on the football field. Um, yeah, it was that, a very uh, interesting night, Rachel. And I think you probably may concur with me where there was questions about the North Main Street parcel on the east side where we really don't have access off of, off of Braver. People think we have more park space than we do. People think we have more athletic fields. We don't own yeah. Sugarloaf Mountain. There's not parking behind the police station. There's a singular field there called Memorial Field. So all these things start to come out, but unfortunately, and I don't know why, I wasn't able to answer any questions that time. Right. And literally at the five minute mark on a $1.1 million project, I was shut off and I really wasn't allowed to speak again in a 30 minute question and answer period. Right. Well, the Braeburn property, that was too bad because we, I mean, the library looked at the Braeburn property. Everybody keeps looking at the Braeburn par property because yeah. it looks so, you know, juicy sitting over there. And it's just not, it's not without huge drawbacks, huge drawbacks. The library is not going there. You know, there's, there's it, the, we looked at it once before for something else as well. I mean, so anyway. We'd love to really look at it for senior housing in the future. And I've met with four people that own houses up there to attempt to gain an easement or anything else to get us a right of way into there so we can look at developing that into senior housing directly in the center of town, across from the senior center, across from the library. With the new library expansion coming into place, it makes perfect sense. So for people to throw out putting soccer fields there, it's not really the same. We want the we want the town park and those soccer fields up directly next to Frontier and Deerfield Elementary School, 
We really want senior housing directly across the street from the senior center, town hall, the library, and where they can walk downtown to those businesses. It's not, uh, Brayburn property is not functional for a, uh, a, a space with any kind of traffic issues, any traffic issues. It's not, it's not sensible. No. So I think our, I guess our message, John, is just that, um, you know, keep, keep us posted. If there's, it's not something that I think needs a planning board approval necessarily, but it is a, it's a big part of, uh, you know, development in, in Deerfield. So certainly anything we can do and to keep up on it um, would be great. But appreciate your uh, appreciate your work on it. Yeah, no, and I highly appreciate it, John. It's um, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out in the mix, because if we can get those fields in a nice, beautiful town park in there and really utilize it on behalf of the of the town, we're going to have kids walking on North Main Street from Frontier over there or. The opposite side of that is they're going to cut through that back parcel that we attempted to acquire, and it's only time before we get constant complaints that kids are cutting through there because they left stuff in the locker room. And literally, it's it's just going to come back, and it's going to broadside us. It's going to bring the issue straight to the forefront, which we really were trying to avoid. Yep. All right. Anything else on that subject? Planning board. Let me just say, John, before you leave, um, just to let the planning board know, I I was corresponding with John last week about this, but then I also, um, because of the Black Lives Matter um, demonstrations and rallies going on, I asked him about about that, and that um, you know, I just I think all of us always now we want to know more about our police training and things like that, and he got right back to me and said this is an important issue for for him and the police department. So I appreciate that, John, and. Uh, you know, it's something we all need to keep in front of us. So thanks. Yeah, no, I highly appreciate it. Massachusetts is really at the forefront. A lot of training and policies come out of here. A lot of the retired police chiefs go to work for the International Association of Chiefs of Police and set the tone for the entire country. Unfortunately, a lot of states <laughs> black. As I described to the chair, you know, John Waite, I am a supporter of Black Lives Matter. I'm a supporter that everybody in the community gets an equal voice and we should treat everybody well and if one of my people is not they will not be working for us so and a good yeah. police chief and good supervisors are constantly monitoring their people and when red flags or even caution yellow flags go up you need to act on them. and some of these departments are not and it's coming back to haunt them dramatically and that's unacceptable so I would, also, me. I would also commend your work with the schools i think that that's a key uh, feature of creating strong bonds with the community. And I, I, I often think that that's overlooked um, as less important when I think it's actually terribly important. So I commend your, your office's work with the schools as well. Yeah, but it breaks my heart, Rachel, because now across the country, you see this movement to pull cops out of the schools. No. And we don't, pull, we don't pull cops in schools for criminality. No. It's our kids are supposed to make mistakes. They're supposed to be knuckleheads. We're supposed to guide them. We're supposed to get them till they're 25, till they hit maturity. I'm not sure I hit maturity at 45 yet. <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think Brian Ravish does an amazing job and he's truly a facilitator. He holds these kids' hands. They text them all weekend. That's what it's supposed to be. If you're in there enforcing criminal law, you're in there for the wrong reason. And that department's got problems. Yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate the dialogue. Just just having the dialogue is good, I think. And then I hope we keep it going, you know, through all this. So appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for you need. All right. I think we're good. All right. New business. Um, review stormwater permit application from Newell Brands. Shanky Candle for improvement of their parking lot. So we were sent a... Um, document which I have here a stormwater permit application from Newell Brands Yankee Candle 9 North um, so they have a total area of impervious surface right now it exists is 11,020 they propose another 10,350 
It's a commercial development where land disturbance will be more than 12,500 square feet. Um, so I think it checks all the boxes that it needs a stormwater uh, permit. Um, Jennifer, could you just remind me, did this go to the CONCOM and where does it stand um, on that? Yes, it, um, it had to go to the CONCOM as well. So um, we tried to have a joint meeting, but that didn't work out. So um, basically it was just about improving and expanding that parking lot and the culvert and, you know, talking about, um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of what they're, what that's called, that it impacted. Uh, I wasn't prepared to so talk, I'm sorry. There wasn't, in the there wetland wasn't area. Wetland, Tony, help. There is wetland, all right. <laughs> So you know, I didn't I I didn't realize Tony was here for this for this project. Yeah. So I guess we could have you uh, we could we could have you give us a little uh, background and update on it, Tony. That'd be great. Thanks for coming. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. Um, can everybody hear me? Um, yes. I um, yes, and I'm glad you're moving very fast as a board now. Um, I was on, but I sometimes to talk too many cooks in the kitchen, so I didn't want to say too much. Um, but the, um, this project is a very small project. Um, Yankee Candle, uh, New Old Brands, if you remember, they did some building improvements. Um, this is where their research facility is on 5 North Street. And um, this building was built some time ago. There was a major expansion done in 1987. And, um, um, and so what they're trying to do, if you are on the northwest side of the building, um, the southwest side, that area is all paved. But the northwest side and the access road on the north side of the building is all very hard packed um, gravel, um, processed stone. Um, so, I mean, it pretty much acts like pavement. Anyways, there's, there's nothing getting into that to soak up. Um, so it's in between um, the building and five and 10. And if you were to go back there, you'll see the gravel area that I'm talking about. And you're correct. The reason why we're here is uh, we're over the 12,500 um, uh, a limit of, of disturbance. So that triggers the requirement with your local stormwater regulation to uh, submit an application for a permit. Um, we met with the Conservation Commission on um, May 28th, uh, had a site visit with them on the 27th. Um, we received unanimous approval on our uh, notice of intent. And I'm waiting for the order conditions. Uh, there's a there's an appeal period, which um, they hold on to it and make sure there's no appeals before they um, submit that to us. And then we'll take that and get it recorded. So so they had a review and um, they liked everything that we're doing. So essentially, if you were to go out there, you'll see piles. So this gravel and maintenance becomes a problem and over time. You're just scraping it away and creating piles. And this is within that very north part of the building in this gravel area and that access is within the riverfront to Bloody Brook. So that's the reason why we had to go to the Conservation Commission. So the options are to just maintain this gravel area and continue to uh, deal with, with the, that issue. Or the other thing is to pave it over that area. Um, Yankee Candle is elected to go with option three as our preferred alternative is to pave only a portion of that gravel parking area is required for operations. Uh, they're going to add, um, you know, they'll have parking spaces along the westerly side of that and then access around the building um, inside that parking to the building. So everything drains to the west away from the building. And what we're going to install, there was a, historically, I sent as part of the package, there is the 87 expansion. Can I just ask a quick, so you say it drains to the west toward the road, toward 5 yeah, and 10. It does, but it can't get to the swale on 5 and 10. There was, uh, there's woods there along there. And back in 1987, there was a swale that was constructed along there with a straight discharge north to the Bloody Brook. Over time, the plowing and the, you know, just pushing that stuff, that has been somewhat compromised. But all you can see the path where it was through the trees because there's an opening there. Um, so, I mean, this with heavy storms, I mean, we can get some of that gravel to wash to the, to the to the bloody brook um so 
the proposal is to pave only the portion that we need, um, remove some of that gravel parking, reestablish the swale, but establish it in a method that creates almost like a little water quality trench, and then install two dry wells with a connector uh, perforated pipe in between. So what we're trying to do is to promote some uh, infiltration, meet some of the standards that are required um, in your bylaw, but also in the state bylaw or the state law, uh, um, Stormwater Management and the Wetlands Protection Act. So with these dry wells and the connector pipe, I can store the amount that's required for, uh, if we were to take this as just straight sod and then put in the gravel. So, so we're improving the situation and then we can, what we'll do is we'll hold like six inches of water in there, more storm that fills up the dry wells, the pipe, um, if it overtaxes the infiltration, you'll get six inches of water in there, more at the dry wells, and it'll topple over and discharge like it did historically to Bloody Brook. And so that's essentially the um, um, the plan. It's pretty minor. Like I said, this is not, you know, we show erosion control barriers to protect uh, on the north side. Everything drains to the north in this area on the South part here, south of this area, it's almost like a high point where they drop the pavement. Um, that drains to the south and goes goes the other way. But it ultimately gets to the to the bloody brook. So I mean, that's that's essentially the um, the proposal here. Um, we will reduce the area of gravel by um, um, oh, I don't have that number. I think it was like six hundred and eighty five feet square feet. We also reduced the altered area within the riverfront by 385 square feet. So it's an improvement um, as opposed to just paving it and let it go. Um, and um, we hope that you'll uh, agree with this approach, meeting your recommendations and your regulations and also the state. And this allows us to clean it and maintain it and, you know, improve that corner so we don't have the, the existing gravel and, 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 you know, runoff from that gravel area. And that's that's essentially it. I'll take any questions that you have. Emily, so let me just um, introduce to the to the two new members here. Um, I, I know I'm sure you're very aware now that we, we did the stormwater bylaw regulation several years ago, and that the planning board is the um, uh, approval agent. You know, approval authority for that. So um, a lot of the projects that we see, some of them are site plan review with a stormwater. Some, this is, this I guess doesn't need a site plan review. Was that, was that determined, Tony? Um, uh, yeah, it's a redevelopment project of an existing parking area. I don't. Just I don't, the stormwater. It's yeah, it's stormwater. So it's, yeah. It's an it's existing parking area. We're just improving it. Um, if it was I new. Do, I do see, oh yeah. If it was new, say that would be a flat area, we would have to come in for site plan review, but um, it's an existing yeah. parking area redevelopment project. So I think when I read the application earlier, I think I, I misread it, um, that the existing impervious is 11,620 and your proposed is 10,350. So you're, so you're saying you're, you're actually gonna have less impervious surface? Yeah, we're not gonna need all of that gravel parking area. We're gonna actually re, you know, over time that gravel expanded and when the swale got pretty much filled and knocked out. So um, I don't know if you have access to the plan, but we're only going to we're only going to um, uh, uh, pay 50 feet, uh, 55 foot or 50 foot width down through there. So um, the gravel extends beyond that six to eight feet in area. So we're going to pull that out and make that part of a, a grass line um, water quality swale that's going to hold water in that area and drain to the um, two, two um, dry wells. And the reason why I have two dry wells, it's fairly flat. So I can't go from um, one end where we start the pavement all the way. I'd be down towards the bloody brook to be able to discharge it. And so it makes sense yeah. to just puddle it. We're just going to pull it right there and get it in um, to the um, dry wells and infiltrate. Anything that does not infiltrate will um, drain over the top and and drain naturally to that um, um, to the bloody brook, which is the the historic drainage design in that area. Except back in the day, everything was just graded to drain, 
and or graded to catch basins or pipes and discharge directly to streams and that. Um, we don't do that now. All right, Emily had a question. Um, yes, even though you talk about reducing the impervious surface, which is great, is this uh, an opportunity for having some of your paving materials be some of the pervious materials that I think are out there now? That's a great question, and that came up at the Conservation Commission. Um, because this is an industrial area, I, I tend not to design that um, for, um, for those uses because they end up getting stuff. We'll, we'll have trucks that are going to drive through that area. Um, so uh, in areas where it's um, straight parking, you know, automobile parking in that, um, then I've done that in certain areas. Um, I've really only had the opportunity to do that once in this area. Uh, as I told um, the commission, um, the, the place that I first designed it and it worked really well was at Kringle Candle. So if you go north on 5 and 10, you've got the farm table on the left. The original, which used to be the old GBI building, um, that parking area, we expanded that parking area there and we put in porous pavement. And to my knowledge, it's still working very well. Um, but the owner did, and we designed it over on the west side, but he didn't like it. Um, so we didn't put it in and we did underground infiltration because in the summertime, it scuffs a lot and it doesn't look, um, no, it didn't look to his liking, but, but it's amazing stuff. It, it will, um, you know, it takes the water and you just have to be careful maintaining it. You can't, you can't sand those parking lots in that cause it'll, it ends up filling the voids and it shuts it right down. Um, so in a case like this, I, I can do the infiltration, do the same thing that you would do with porous pavement here um, with the dry wells and the swale. And it actually produces a little bit of green area, which is not there between the gravel. So the gravel goes right up to the trees right now. So we're going to pull some of that gravel back, uh, create the swale, put the catch, you know, the dry wells and the connector pipe. So you're going to get the same benefit um, um, that you would for, for porous pavement. Um, but I think because it's a commercial use, I wouldn't I wouldn't advocate doing that. Thank you. Any other planning board questions? So what we tend to do, because uh, most of us on the planning board are not uh, hydrologists or other fancy titled things, is have a peer review. Um, come in and, and look at it and, and talk to the engineer, the developer's engineer. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of been our our way to do it. Uh, you know, Tony, this is a smaller project, um, but I do also, the Bloody Brook is an issue in town. You know, it has been for a long time. And so I, I certainly don't want any changes to that without really knowing uh, what's going on. Um, well, I, I mean, this is a very small project. I, you know, I can understand like the condo project and that having peer review, very complicated storm drain system and so forth. This is very small. It's been reviewed by uh, DEP and it's been, you know, reviewed by the Conservation Commission and they're, that's their main thing. If we weren't next to the Bloody Brook, they wouldn't have even looked at it. Um, so their major concern is the resource areas. Um, I, I mean, obviously, you have that right to do that, but it's so small, it just is going to slow slow the project down. And what are the what are the issues if something happens? There can't be any any. Um, it's got to be better than what we're what's there right now for water quality and peak runoff. So, um, have you talked I, to um, as as Kevin uh, Scarborough DPW been involved or no? Because it's a private project. Um, public is not involved. Public won't maintain it. There's an operation maintenance plan in the stormwater report, as we're required to do by your regulations and the the DP. Uh, but the swale goes out to five and ten, does it? No, it doesn't. Everything's on our own property. In this area, you've got a swale that's in the five and ten property, which is very deep. Um, our our yeah. our we're actually lower than five and ten there. Um, so if I was there, I could really point it out to you on the plan if we had a instead you know, of a I'm Zoom meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's all on Seems it's like all on good. Yankee Candle property. It doesn't um, it doesn't go on five and ten. Otherwise, we would have to get a state permit, and we don't need to do that. Everything's on our own prop or on the Yankee Candle property. Yes, but and it's no public DP improvement. Has, uh, DP looked at it. Yes, because they get a copy of every notice and intent we submit. But they and didn't make any. They didn't say anything about it. Do oh, we they did. They had they did some con they had some comments and I had to address those for the conservation commission. Yeah. Yeah, they were minor. It was a minor minor comments. I I probably could read them to you if you wanted to, but I probably have that here. Well, what do other uh, planning board members think here? I would I I feel like we should um you know obviously this would have been a nice cook co-meeting, save Tony a, a night out uh, in and uh, with Contam. Um, and, you know, it's funny because we just had that other property on North Street. So I was snooping around over there um, for that project across the street. Uh, um, and I know exactly that, but I haven't seen the area. Um, and the Bloody Brook is such a, a that that is such a big concern for the center of town with water. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to hear from Concom. Well, I, as soon as I get the order of conditions, I can provide it to you. Um, I don't have a sway. Um, I'm just trying to give you an idea where okay. our parking our parking doesn't expand, and we don't extend beyond the limits of the gravel as it is right now. No, no, um, we we hear we we do hear you, Tony, and we understand where you're coming from. So, um, Max, do you have any anything on this one? Uh, now the the soil there is the soil there ought to take it, but if, if you feel like you need more peer review, by all means. In the stormwater report, we actually went out and dug, some, dug a hole out there to confirm the soils, and DEP was extremely happy with our uh, approach. And that that soils report, and that is in the um, record that was submitted to you. Um, uh, uh, COCOT, we used COCOT's backhoe, went out and dug it and logged the soils. Yes, there shouldn't be a problem. The water table, and and we're much higher than Bloody Brook. If we were really close to the elevation of Bloody Brook, then we might have water table problems. Um, we're not. Um, this is dry and it's it's good material. It should infiltrate this parking lot. Like I said, it's fairly small. It's a huge improvement. So under our under our stormwater bylaws, I think we're required to do a public hearing. Um, so I would. Well, that's what this I is to, actually. I mean, I mean we we. Um, this wasn't. This was advertised, and the abutters were notified. Is that dumb? Yes. That's yeah, correct. Is that what... This is a yes. public hearing. Oh. Yes, it was. It is my a public bad. hearing. Yes. yes, it is. My bad. Uh, that, and to be honest, bad. I did not introduce this as a. Uh... And and to be honest with you, we didn't uh, open it. We didn't open the public hearing. The, the honest, yeah. To be honest with you, we actually notified for our conservation commission three hundred foot range for abutters. Um, you have a discrepancy or a, a difference. You take your zone, stormwater bylaw and you make it as if it was a zoning or a site plan action and not a CONCOM action, you know. So um, we, I, we, for the Conservation Commission, we notified 300 foot abutters just to be consistent with the stormwater regulation. But this is a public hearing. At very least, we should open it as a public hearing, if it is a public hearing, because that, that, that actually is a different process uh, than just a discussion. Yes. Because, um, it was advertised like that. It did, did go out as a public hearing. So, John, you got to open the public hearing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking for it. I got it. Um, oh, that's a different one. I'm looking for the notice of the public hearing. Um, I really got to read that. Um, I can I look know, at my email too. On the web. Yeah, I don't look at it. I, it, should, it should be on the website. I don't. It's on the website. 
Hold on, let me look. Uh, um, it's not on our agenda. No, I only found an attachment on the website. Notice of public hearing, but that's from uh, June last year. Hmm. Oh, that's the, actually that's the floodplain uh, public hearing that we can use for next. <laughs> Next month. Um, well, all right. I'm wondering if Sue just did the NOI as a public, because when I'm looking in the emails, I'm seeing um, the CONCOM as a public hearing or the notification. Can anybody hear me there? Yes. Yes. This yes. is this is Paul. I've been I've been trying to call and I've been trying to get through and get through and get through and I had to hang up and start over again to get into the into the program. Okay, you're here. Um, okay. And I just I went down to my property which is on the uh north end of the property and uh and I saw where the hole had been dug up all the, the around the uh drain from Route five and ten. Um, and going out into the to the back there, and um, so Paul, and I didn't Paul, I did not get a chance. A I'm sorry. Are you talking as in a butter now? That's yes. I I initiate. I told everybody that in the beginning of this meeting. Oh okay. I didn't get that. But, okay. So so we had a you know it's it's being dumped out into the back of my property. I have not really gone out there. I don't go out there. It's it's got poison ivy right around that area when we plow. So, but I I don't mind. I mean, it's all it's all been there for quite some time. So, that's all into the into the five and ten uh, property, major portion of it. And you did get a uh, a notice of a public hearing. Is I is did get a member of the. I did get a notification of that point. But we've had we've had some issues here with family issues, but uh, that's okay. Um, we didn't get a chance to go into that, but uh, I figured it would come up. I don't think it really affects it that much, um, but uh, it was funny when I had to go out there and see the uh, uh, the identification of where the the water is coming off of five and ten into the into that area, and I don't know where it comes from from that that uh, parking lot back down, probably about a quarter. Of, Quarter of an acre down to the south of where I am. Yeah, this area doesn't drain to the five and ten property though. Um, it goes directly north to the Bloody Brook. And you are on a butter on the other side of the Bloody Brook, right, Paul? I'm on the north end of it there, and um, yeah. and it was I don't know where it goes through the corner of my property, but uh, but I did see the ten inch uh, concrete pipe, ten twelve inch. Uh, con uh, concrete pipe coming off the highway to drain out into the back there. Yeah, um, that's that's five and ten state state um, runoff. We're not. That's not a that's state land out there. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, do you have a copy of the legal? I, I would, I'm sorry. Uh, I was I was asking. What is it, Jen? Is it Jen? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a copy of the legal yeah. ad? Because I know um, we paid for we paid for. Um, um, for the advertisement, and I know we supplied money for the notifications to the abutters. I know that yeah, I got it. That I way. did I'm get it. Right. You did? Okay. I did get it. Yes. Well, you have. I'm having troubles. I'm hearing. I'm trying to watch it on my telephone and trying to listen to it on my on my home phone here, and things were just echoing all the time the whole time we've been talking. But I understand what's going on, and I I guess it's uh, it's 
it should it should be okay from my standpoint, I would guess. But John, like what what do you want to do about opening the meeting and having it being a hearing instead of a meeting? He needs and, to read the notice. He doesn't have yeah. a copy of the notice. He can't read it. Okay, so Paul, you. I was wondering, do you have a copy of the notice? Paul. Legal ad. Uh, the legal ad. John, John, are you asking me if I had a notice? Yes. Yeah. You have it with you. Yes, I did get. I did get a notice in there. Uh, it was on the 28th, and I was unable to meet to be on the phone with that. Um, I, I'm very familiar with the with the Zoom, but this this whatever whatever this conference one is 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 very difficult for me to use from here. Yeah, Paul. Imagine, if you have a copy of the notice, could you read it to us? Oh, hang on just a minute. Let me. I think I he's did. alluding to the Conservation Commission, John, because that was May 28th when we met. See, us as the applicant or the applicant's representative for conservation wetland um, permitting, it's incumbent upon us to notify the abutters and place the legal ad, which we did. And I think that's what Paul is alluding to. On zoning and um, zoning planning. planning board, and because this stormwater permit is a planning board issue, um, the town, we pay for the legal ad and pay for the abutters and the town does the notification and places the ad at the expense of the uh, applicant. So, um, Right. So what I'm saying is if Paul has the notice, he could read it and we could then open and make it an official open public hearing. Um, I don't have in front of me, but let me look and see. I've got, that should be around here. Otherwise, I'm thinking we could we could do it uh, in three weeks, and in that three weeks, we could get a peer review just to look at this quickly for us. Um, and, and cover okay, I feel cover I feel it. bad I feel bad about that, but um, I, I um, I've always been kind of it's always been kind of tough over there with that water flooding out into that back because most of my property in the back is is total is all wet. I believe is that true, Steve? Uh, um, yeah, Tony, is that true? I, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know if I've been on your 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 property. I mean, I I don't, you know, I think I went to your store once. Um, yeah, that somebody came over, over and opened up that opened up the end of that pipe right there on the edge of my um, ground because we we as a owner of that property have made an effort to um, uh, to keep track of that land and right. keep it plow keep it uh, um, you know taken care of. And it was kind of funny when I came came down there about uh, oh, a week or so ago, and there was the uh, there was two pieces of, there was a two by four standing up where there was that pipe that comes out of the off the highway into yeah. there, and it's not my property that it's going on to. It's the it's the uh, highway, the state highway. Yeah, there's um, there's a I think there's a ten by ten box uh, culvert that the Bloody Brook drains uh, under. Uh, five and ten, um, but um, you know that's that's all state related maintenance and so forth. Um, yeah, this this little project is all within the Yankee property, and you know discharges. I don't have a scale on me, uh, but it's got to be seventy feet away from the Bloody Brook or so. Um, so it's it's a it's um, I mean the reason why. Essentially, we're captured here is because of the riverfront, you know. Uh -huh. Well, that's that's too bad that you know we thought this was this should have been a public hearing um, this evening. Uh, it's been very difficult for me. I've been sitting here trying to keep track of this, and I'm hearing a delay from from two different places here, and I just it's so hard to follow it through. So um, maybe I can get into into some other better another computer or something that'll get through. I'll try to, to do something. I, I'm sorry to, to, that it's not, it's not easy. When I get, when I, when the phone part of it starts canceled okay. out. Do we, anyways, have we're, other, okay. do we have any other buddy on the line? I don't see anybody. Um, no other public, no other. Yeah, Bill Swayze is probably on my client. Yeah. Bill Swayze uh -huh. from Yankee Candle is on. Oh, there he is. Yeah. So. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but I've just, it, it's, it's been a very, 
very frustrating time here trying to trying to hear and have all delays going one one year and one out the other and um but get um, it. so this might have to be notified again to a butters and all of that I'm. I've oh, just been looking, I and the only thing I can find is the NOI for the Concom that Sue had sent to me in an email. So, well, I've got I've got this meeting here that mm -hmm. says the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a meeting on November fifteenth at seven p.m. Meetings uh, normally held at the municipal office are being remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and well where required that's just public the agenda. That's just that's not. That's your butters That's the agenda. Yeah. This is a this is a separate. Um, this is not part of the ant the agenda, but it's um, it's a it's its own it's its own public hearing on fifteenth of uh, June. Oh, so you do have that? Oh, that's what we're, that's that's what we're, what we're looking, looking for. for then, Paul. That's what, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at right here in my hand. I found it. I've got it here. <laughs> You want me to read it? The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on June 15, 2020 at 7 p.m. Meeting normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in, in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, unfortunately, with with all this uh, this stuff that's been going on, uh, my wife has had a had a right hip surgery and replaced on the 11th of March, and then um, we've been keep we've reading, been keep reading uh, the thing. Okay, the plan the more? planning board will review the application of Newell Brands Inc. Yankee Candle of Five North Street Assessor Map 168 slash 109 for a storm stormwater permit web browser using meeting URL https colon colon ww dot any meeting com slash one seventy one dash oh one oh three two seven dial in number which I'm on the phone here now two six two oh six three three one four eight three six and the pin number one seventy one dash oh one oh three two nine pound. A copy of the stormwater application is available at our website at www.deerfieldmass.us Deerfield Planning Board's a signature at the bottom of this notification. So we're talking oh, about stormwater permit. Hallelujah, that's right. right. Uh, open that public hearing. Good. So that's official. Thanks, Paul. Um, all right, so now we've, it's an official uh, stormwater bylaw public hearing. Now the question is, what do we want to do, planning board? Well, I have, I, I, I'll be honest. So I haven't had a chance to really look at these plans, um, and um, and I, 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 you know, I'm sure Tony's right. It just and and uh, I mean, I, I, again, I because I was out perusing the uh, property across the street for review um, not so very long ago. Um, I actually have a little more familiarity with the property than, at that at that side of the property than I would have normally, but I don't have a lot of familiarity. And, my, and I'm taking um, it all in, um, but I just feel a little um, uncomfortable moving forward without more information. Well, I did get so, Rachel, the notification, and uh, th this is Paul again. Um, I did not, I did not see any notification for this uh, stormwater um, uh, uh, permitting. Uh, I mean, um, uh, stormwater, yeah, stormwater permit. And so I didn't, I didn't necessarily see anything other than what was going to be pronounced tonight, and we've been talking about it. Um, I don't know. Does it take another? Does it take another notification, or, or did that one for the uh, that was no. back on the twenty eighth? No. I think we can continue it. I just don't want to continue it a long time because I feel that right. Tony's right. Uh, Tony's uh, discussion tonight makes me think very clearly that this is not a dramatic um, project. But I, I, I having no no notice from Concom and. Um, 
having no super good familiarity with the project other than what we've learned tonight, honestly, I would feel more comfortable continuing it. Not necessarily forever. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what what everybody June 6th, I mean, we're able to share this and share a map of what he's talking about with us. Yes. Tony, is, are you able well, we to all, do, share your screen so that we can see the project and see what you're talking about? Because I can't find a visual of it. Attack. Let, let me. Okay, I so, think I have one. I, do you have yeah. one? Can I? Do oh, I have only the. I have only telephone conversation here. I do not have any video. Can I make a suggestion? So yes. I've been looking at the plan the whole time, and I kind of follow it, but I can't totally follow it because, as I get, and I said, we're not, you know, hydrologists and things. So I would recommend that we make a motion to continue the hearing until July 6th, three weeks. And in the meantime, get a, uh, a peer review who doesn't have to spend much time on it, and it, it, we can give instructions to just do a, a quick, quick review of it and have an answer by the July 6th so that we can then vote on it at that point. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to hold you up on, on that, but uh, I'll see if I can't get some kind of computer or the Chrome on here so that I can see it from one, part, one point only, not just on, on my cell phone and on my regular telephone. Well, here's what, so the, there's a motion on the table to, there are two motions as far as I can tell, potentially. One is to hire a peer review, and the other is to continue. Okay. Um, so I, I'd say that we should continue, and I would move that I'd we say continue. So that that's my motion is to continue this meeting until the open the public hearing until not this meeting the public hearing until um, June, July sixth. Um, I would motion. like. I mean, we would offer to do a site visit. Typically, boards will do a site visit to review the thing in the field um, prior to a meeting so that they understand the project and the scope. Uh, possibly with that, you'll see how tiny it is, and that, you may not yeah, need that, to spend the money on a peer reviewer for something as yeah. small as this. Uh, Tony, Tony I'm, I'm willing to go out and take a look at it. I just I just need to make sure that everybody understands that, uh, that I am a... a uh, um, and a, a butter to what they're doing, so I just don't want to have a problem over it. You know what I mean? I I'm not no, I think you'll be very, very impressed and and be happy with the improvements because um, they do. Yeah, I, I don't have a, yeah, okay. Sorry, and Rachel and others, I can send you the plans and everything, the packet like Concom looked at. So that okay, you have that, and then if you did want to schedule a site visit, no, I think we should schedule it tonight. I think we should continue. So I, I have a motion on the table, a, a move that we continue this till July 6th. That, that, that I think I'd like to do that first. Um, Somebody second I it. That. I second that. Let's go around and vote. Um, Rachel Blaine, aye. Now, can I, can I vote on this or do I abstain? Abstain. Abstain. Yeah, yeah. safer to abstain. Okay. Um, Ann-Mary. Ann-Mary Coulier, um, aye. Max. Max, I. Paul. Abstain. Emily. Emily Wolf, cool, I. And Denise. Denise Mason, I. John Wait, I. All right, so 601 to hold the, to continue this meeting until July 6th at 7.30. I don't, I don't know if we set a time, but we already have the other thing at 7, so um, yeah. say 7.30. And then, um, so then it's, we don't really make, need to make a motion if we're not going to hire a peer review, but what we want to do is um, have a few planning board members visit the site, and we all want to look at the plans. Yeah. Right? Okay, and when, when will we, how will we find out, um, John? Well, Tony, what do you have? What do you have available? My my time is little, uh, little, little. I have some openings. <laughs> well, good. I mean, we can do it. We could do it um, tomorrow. We could do it um, Wednesday. Can't do it Thursday or Friday, and then Wednesday's that. fine for me. I I've got something tomorrow morning till noon. So other than that, tomorrow uh, Wednesday would probably be better. 
I can meet any time of the day. Uh, Wednesday, um, end of day? Five o'clock. Sounds good. Wednesday, right five enough? o'clock, the seventeenth. I I can't I can't do it on the fifth because I have a, I have a, another meeting. Um, mm-hmm. I, I could do it on Thursday night without a. I don't. That's that's the one night Wednesday night. No, to, I've got the, Wednesday the the seventeenth, um, right? Yeah, because because I think it's important. I know you can't act on it, but if you get a sense walking away from that that you really think you want to peer review it then maybe we could get that in the works with tie and bond or somebody like that um, and have their information well, I, for the next meeting. Do you want to do it after, after on Tuesday, tomorrow? Or you want to do it after five? No, we're going to do it when you can't do Wednesday at five o'clock. No, I have, I have a meeting at my credit union. I'm, we got a oh. board meeting that night. Uh, on the 17th? Uh, on the, the 17th is our, is our board meeting. Okay. For the Franklin Crest Credit for Fresh Tuesday. I can go I can go Thursday night. I mean any other day of the week this week is not is is fine. How about tomorrow? Tony, are you free tomorrow at five? I am tomorrow at five o'clock if you want to anybody else? Annalise, good. Denise? Let me me, I'm checking my calendar. I think I'm good. I'm good at five. I'm good tomorrow, Tuesday. Tuesday. John? Yeah, good. So do Matt, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the legal is of of all of you meeting there on site. Is there any sort of no no you no. can just yeah there is something can't advocate for the project, but I can show you the area and talk about the improvements. So you can't. You, yeah. you, you can't, it's not an open meeting, so you really can't discuss between yourself. You can't discuss and it, but you can meet, right? You can okay. meet and get right. an understanding. Yeah. We do it yeah. all the time with yeah. before meetings so that the boards are up to it's date right. in it and they understand. Yeah. Just no discussion. No discussion. Right. Now, okay. I don't know right. if there any public on the phone. Is there anybody that's, you know, besides Paul that is, in opposition or have questions about it from the public? I can't see all of the public on my thing. Well, I, I, I don't I don't have a real problem with it and I think that if we can just go and take a look at it and and then we can decide from there. I don't I don't I don't know I don't need we need to go out and and uh, and you know having uh, somebody go out and peer review it. I'm just trying to yeah. just so trying we, to see what's going on what's happening. Point. Tomorrow at five o'clock, and I'll I'll meet you on the back, right at the back of the building. So you come in North Street, go go in, and drive around the back of the building, and I'll just we'll meet you there. Okay, five o'clock. Five o'clock tomorrow. That's great. Thank you so much. I think it'll it'll clear up any confusion. You'll actually get to see it in the field, and I'll do my best to describe how big of a hole we're going to dig and how it's going to come together. So yep. what I'll try to think, try think, to do is send the plans to you tomorrow morning, so you'll have it and you can print them out before you go for your site visit. Okay, so when can I get that stuff? Because I do, I think I'm gonna. My string group has been playing the town, <laughs> the town common, but um, I'd be willing to get the paperwork anytime during the day before we get there to see what's what. Is that okay? Uh, I'll send it in. The, I'll, I'll be at work at eight a.m. so I can get it and send it. To you all, and who who was speaking? Sorry, I'm, this is Paul. That was Paul. Paul, yeah. So I can. So check your check your email at nine o'clock tomorrow. Nine o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. I will do that. No problem. And I will have documents with me, so you know we can go through the whole okay. package. With you too. Okay. Well, thank Very you good. so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Yeah. You know, you. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Tony. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Good job. I know. That's. Rachel? That's all we've yeah. got on the agenda. Um, Annalie, you got a question? Yeah, no, earlier Rachel said that there also was a motion about having the um, peer review. Do we have to? So we don't, that? I don't think we have to do that. If we're going to do this site, I mean, and if we come up with something, we say, oh my gosh, this definitely needs a peer review, then we could actually call another meeting and do that in, in advance, or we could wait till July 6th. He's, yeah. if Tony's taking a bit of a risk. 
he, he, you know, he doesn't think we need a peer review. He thinks that this is going to be obvious to us tomorrow. And it may be, that, that may be. And then we all feel very comfortable with it. If but we all leave there, not having discussed it, but we leave there um, without discussing right. it. And we, we decide that um, a peer review is necessary. Then when we all come back together on July 6th, we're going to say, so he's taking a bit of a risk. If this sets him back, if then then we do a peer review on the sixth, that's another month away for him. Um, uh -huh. And let's, Rachel, what I'm wondering is if we could make a motion now to say that if necessary, we could hire a peer review prior to July 6th. Leave it a little open-ended. So, okay. I, I, okay. I, 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 I don't have a problem with that. So, so I would move that we actually, what we can do is we can um, um, deputize or embolden or, you know, authorize John right. to, to, um, to engage, to, to set out an RFP for a peer review, and then he cannot do it. That's the better way to do it, right? So we say, I make a motion that we um, ask John Waite to ask Chair to, or ask Jen to, um, Engage a peer review, um, um, but then we just don't do it. If we if we decide, can we do that? Is that scummy? Uh, I'm good with anything right. that, that so, happens. We're going to meet at five o'clock. Can we come up with an answer then? Well, well I the don't, whole thing is, well, is that you can't discuss it. So you can right. you yep. can say you can say you want to set up a peer review. John can set up a peer review, and we just don't do it. However. If John feels at the site visit tomorrow that he thinks that it needs a peer review, right. then we can go ahead after just, Rachel makes her motion. But nobody just, can discuss it. It will really be up to John. So I'm going to jump in here and say I'm going to make a motion at the discretion of the vice chair, Rachel, because I'm not going to get there tomorrow. So oh. at the discretion of the vice chair, uh, we hire a peer reviewer or not. Okay. Okay, so somebody has to second that. I'll second that. Denise, second it. All right. All those in favor? Rachel. Aye. Rachel. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Uh, Max. Max Antes, aye. Paul. Oh. I abstain. abstain. Um, Annalie. Annalie Wolf Cole, aye. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. John Waite, aye. So 601. So um, at some point in the next week or so, at the discretion of, the, of Rachel, uh, we hire a peer reviewer. But good. So okay. as many of us as possible come tomorrow without uh, discussing the, the issues. <laughs> Right. This is Max. Okay. Just, just look at the situ just look at it and then and, and that's it, right? Okay. Yeah, you can listen to Tony, but that's all. Max, you had okay. something? Right. Max, what okay. right. are you available, will, Max? I won't be able to make it, but if I have a set of plans I can uh Okay, good. Review those. I'll send those out first okay. thing in the morning. And one way or the other I'll get some I'll get the plans as well tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're continuing the public hearing. Um, Rachel, it would be great to get Tony to sign that thing tomorrow, but I don't know. Oh, the yeah. The form that we use when so we, I'll when stop we by continue the, public I'll hearing. Stop by. Jen is in the office. So I'll stop by Jen okay. during the day. What time do you leave, Jen? Four. So I'll stop by before I get the paper and bring it to Tony. That'll like, make it all nice and efficient. Uh, and again, if, Thank you, Rachel. if anything, I'll just keep it in the foyer in an uh, an envelope. Fair, good, okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Thank you. You can pick it up in five minutes to five, yeah. Great. Yeah. I just yes, have please. a question. Whoops. This is yep. Denise. Just the question. I know we can't discuss, but we could ask questions. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can discuss with Tony as much as you want. You just can't right, deliberate right, right. among these. Uh, among Got it. Yeah. yeah. All right, is there any other business? 
almost a two hour meeting. We're trying to keep them to one and a half hours. But Ma uh, Max, if you happen. want, if there are questions that you want to ask after you look at the plans. He should give you a well, call. Depend on the plans. They're I usually know. pretty, pretty. It's pretty. Sounds pretty cut and dried, but it does, right? Well, but if there's a can, can we? I think you could just text me the question. Yeah. If there was any question, and I would yeah. ask. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Just on yeah. the record. Okay. Thanks. All right. We've already set a date. For oh, oh, I have, I have something. Yeah. Uh, they're actually all online. If you go to the calendar on our website. For the concom meeting, right. they're all there. Okay, good. You can look at them tonight. Okay. Uh, I had I had uploaded them to that concom meeting. Okay, good. So I think that was uh, May twenty eighth. That's what he. I mean, I'd have to go back and look, but I think that they were saying that that was posted okay. for. Perfect. Yeah, but they're there. But I can send them out anyways tomorrow in an email. But all the whole packet is is there. Thank you. If you could send them anyway, that would be great. Just cause. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Cause, yeah, absolutely. All right. We have uh, we've set a date for the next meeting, and that is July uh, Monday, July 6th at 7 o'clock. We already have two agenda items. That's exciting. So, Denise and Emily, just so you know, that is the our, – our, our schedule is Mondays – the first Monday of every month at um, 7 o'clock unless otherwise and every once in a while there's a holiday or something that messes us up and then we try to figure out usually we go to the second monday of the month but in this case we had to go to the third because of the two other town elections town things going on so, yeah excellent do we have a motion to adjourn i move that we adjourn second it i, I think that's, uni that's unanimous i i'm making a, a, a declaration that that's a unanimous decision so <laughs>